Hello friends, my name is Sive and this is Stories and Sive. This is my booktube channel. I'm going to be doing another little cozy weekend reading vlog. I did one of these last weekend. I am joining you for my lunch break on my Friday. I'm currently reading The Lost Queen by Signa Pike. Past the halfway point, so I'm probably coming close to the two-thirds mark. We follow Langareth and Lila Kim, and they are twins. They're the children of a chief in old England. It's set in like 500 AD and um, there's a rebellion rising. There's a lot of political maneuvering happening and we follow these two, specifically Langareth. She starts the book at 10 years old. Currently she's 16 years old um, and she's been married off as a child bride to a neighboring chiefdom that they, her father specifically, needed an alliance with. And it's about her journey. There's a conflict between new Christianity and the old way, which is what they would label as paganism. So there's old magic. There are these counselors called wisdom keepers that have a special connection to time and magic. So there's a lot of different elements in this book that I'm really enjoying right now. The tagline is Outlander meets Camelot, and I'm going to sit down and read this. I'm also feeling a bit under the weather at the moment, and I have friends coming over tonight for a movie night, and I'm trying to eat. I've got a banana, I've got a sweet potato, trying to eat some healthy food to try and get my nutrients level back up and try and start feeling better soon for my weekend. So I'm about to sit here outside and read my book and I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, it's the weekend you guys, I'm so happy that it is finally the weekend. So I have friends coming over in a little bit and Jared is finishing cooking up dinner. I'm just gonna take a second to decompress after my work day. And um, I just wanted to tell you that I had another reading update that I should have told you about when I opened up the vlog. The audiobook that I was reading is The Neighbor Favor. And what, the reason why I say was is because I finished that this afternoon. I've now started The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins, but I wanted to tell you I'm home. It's the weekend and I'm gonna take a minute. Good morning. It is Saturday morning. It's later in the morning. Okay, I had a very slow morning. I slept so badly last night, and so I was trying to do some sleeping in. Anyways, coffee is brewed, and I am making myself some breakfast. I had a plan with a friend of mine who is a bride, but right now the plan got canceled, and I'm on standby before going to plan something else. That was kind of the only plan that I have today, which is honestly great news because I did, like I said, sleep terribly, and I would love a quiet day at my house, honestly. I would like to get some chores done and stuff around the house. I have the dishwasher on, gonna put on a wash. The Saturday things, so I'll keep you posted. I am gonna get into some reading today, but first, coffee and food. Okay, I just ate some breakfast and I'm still drinking my coffee. I was watching some of The Fall of the House of Usher, which is the new like Netflix adaptation, and I've been slowly going through it for a few weeks now, honestly, and I'm really enjoying it when I watch it. It doesn't do a great job of like pulling me back in as far as like feeling desperate like to binge it because it's so scary, y'all. Like it's actually horror and the jump scares are crazy. Um, the family is just being like ripped apart from the inside out. There's a really, really great mystery though to it. So if you can stand some gore and you're okay with horror, I would definitely encourage you to watch it. I'm really enjoying it. And like the characters are just 
like it's how the other half live you know i haven't heard back from my friend about if we're doing anything so i'm about to put my headphones in and start listening to the heiress by rachel hawkins i got maybe 20 percent of the way through the audiobook so just through the exposition um and it is about this woman and she is basically sharing letters she's notorious she's famous she's had multiple husbands and so many of them died and it gives very like um, seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo just as far as format this person at the end of their life or recapping to someone else kind of all of their journey and mistakes and wins and losses um, so I'm enjoying it so far I've read one of Rachel Hawkins books called The Villa and I read that back in December and so I really enjoyed that I would think her writing is for me so I'll give her new release a shot and we'll see how it goes folding laundry doing some chores, cleaning the bathroom. We're gonna get into it now. Good morning, gorgeous. Well, good afternoon. It's about noon and I'm heading over to my friend's house. I'm gonna do a little socializing, test run her hair, her wedding hair. I spent the last hour, maybe a little more, doing some chores and listening to the heiress. The heiress is going really well. I am absolutely loving the story and I I love like old money, like old houses, bitter families, like who's getting what from the will. I love like that drama and this is definitely a mystery and it's a thriller but it has that different like level of like old money drama. So I'm really enjoying it. I literally listened to like, I'm now at 44%, um, so I listened to a lot. This is gonna take me into the afternoon, so I'm going to keep you posted on stuff that I read when I get home. Okay, gorgeous people. I'm back from like, doing some stuff with some friends. Went to get our nails done, not me, because I spend money on books, not on nails. <laughs> I also went to the grocery store and I've just ate some more food cooked kind of cleaned up the kitchen, unloaded the dishwasher, that sort of thing. In a perfect world, it would not be four o'clock by the time I'm starting to sit down and read this. I really enjoyed spending time with my friends though and making those memories is more important to me. So now I'm home and I'm gonna drink a lot of water because I'm highly caffeinated and dehydrated um, and I'll get into the last week. update for you. It's a bit later. Actually, it's a lot later. Um, we've had dinner and while we were eating, we started the first episode of the NASCAR documentary. Didn't hook me as much as the F1 did on like the first episode, so I'll probably give it another shot, like one more episode. Now, my reading update. I have less than 100 pages left of this book and I love this historical fantasy. It's just been a joy to read and I love the characters. It's hard to articulate what makes Langareth such a beautiful character to read from. She, you follow her in her childhood and into her adulthood and because of that you just are so endeared to her and the struggles that she's, you know, gone through. She has a wonderful sacrificial heart she's a servant-hearted person and it's not necessarily out of like the goodness of her heart which i think is a cool theme to explore it's truly just the situation that she's in and it's in survival mode she has to adapt she has to be a servant to this new family that she is marrying into she makes the best of it and a large theme of this book is destiny and duty that you have to your family or to your kingdom Something really, really big has just happened and I find that when I read this book, I'm so completely immersed. So I do not foresee an issue with finishing this book tonight. I have 70 pages left. I have broken, like I said, the last 100 pages. I'm gonna be setting two 45 minute timers. Next time I talk to you about this book, I will be done. <music> I just finished the last school. This is a very powerful story and I'm just processing because
because I'm stunned. I'm truly stunned. The book ends and there is a sequel. It's not a good ending. And then following this is a note from the author who talks about these characters and reveals their root in real history and she explains the research that she has done on 6th and 7th century Scotland and the wars over territory and the migrations of people that she did in order to produce this book and these are based on real people and real events that happen which just makes what Langareth went through all the more powerful huge theme of storytelling much of Celtic Tradition is rooted in oral histories and song, but in this context, the word song means so much more than an actual tune. It's storytelling, it's art, it's culture, it's um, history, it's mystery. The implication is that this character, Lingareth, based on a real woman, has had her story suppressed and written over. We as a society come to the realization consistently that what we are taught, what history we know to be true, um, is biased and written and produced by those who are were in power and that so much of true, authentic reality is lost in histories and recorded incorrectly. And at the very end of the book, horrible things, horrible things are happening. Langareth starts to write and that's how the book ends it was so good you guys it was so good my heart is shattered right now my only solace my only hope is that there is a second book and then a third book i have no idea how this is gonna go because if this is based in truth and based on you know real events that happened how are we coming back from this so the second book is out and has been out for a number of years. And the third book um, was meant to come out last year, but was delayed and has a release date in December of 2024. So instead of rushing out to buy the second book right now, but I'll read it in a few months, maybe before summer, to keep my memory of what happened and my love and connection for these characters alive, over the next year as I wait for this last book to come out. I think that this is very easily the best book I've read so far this year. I know it's only mid-February, but out of the number of five stars that I've gotten so far this year, this is the best. I have nothing else to say to you at this time. I just got my heart broken. Good morning, it is Sunday. I wanted to let you know that last night after I finished The Lost Queen, I was obviously devastated. Um, and I decided to pick up another book. As I was reading The Lost Queen and really, really enjoying it, I definitely knew that I was caring a lot for the characters and I was definitely getting attached and very, I was just very connected to the story and to the struggle of the characters. So the way that the ending went was just not what I was expecting in a beautiful way. So I was like, I mean, I was on the floor. I was like struck dumb a little bit last night. But I, what the ending was and I still like am struggling to process it a little bit. So easily my favorite book of the year so far. Absolutely fantastic. It was like 8 30 when I finished the book. I was not ready to go to bed and I was definitely in a reading mood so I decided to pick up The Martian which is the next book on my kind of monthly TBR that I've set for myself and this is a sci-fi by Andy Weir that people will probably be familiar with because there was a very successful movie, movie adaptation done a few years ago with Matt Damon. I got like 60 pages into this last night so this it's a lot for me so i read you know the last 140 150 pages of the lost queen and then read 60 pages of this so 200 pages in one evening is a pretty cool accomplishment especially given both of those books are this one and the lost queen would be mm, intimidating books on my tbr if you will don't ask me why I put two of those back to back on my February TBR. I don't know what I was thinking. But this is successful because I love the narrative voice of Mr. Mark Watney. He's hilarious. And for the dire situation that he's in, he is 
as equipped as anyone. He's a botanist and he is a mechanical engineer and he is one of six crew members on the Ares 3 that landed and he in a windstorm was injured and they left him. They actually thought he was dead because his suit registered that all of his vitals were gone. Like it's not their fault. It was a horrific situation. He doesn't blame them. He's doing the math on when the Ares 4 is gonna come in like four years or something like that. So he is trying to maneuver his survival to last him for four years until he can be rescued. <laughs> okay, hold on. It's actually stupid of me to attempt to describe this to you before I've had my coffee. There's a transportation device called the MAV and the MAV is nowhere to be found. They don't know where it is. He doesn't know where it is because um, after the windstorm or he was unconscious for a few hours, um, he just doesn't know. The only communication that is available between Mars, the Aries 3, and Earth is in the MAV. So he is living in this hub that was created, but the hub itself does not have any communication devices. And they designed it that way because there was no way that they could imagine any space group being on the Ares 3 without the MAV. It's vital for transportation um, in between the sites that they were meant to visit. So that's where we're at. Really enjoying this. It was not as sciencey as I thought. Like it's sciencey, but like, I can keep up, it's fine. I'm a smart girl. I saw this movie a few years ago. Don't remember how it ended. Remember very little about it actually, but I'll read this book. Probably will watch the movie adaptation afterwards. Wanna rewatch that. Okay, anyways, coffee is brewing. I have a few things to do today. I have church and then I'm going to lunch with a friend. But after that, I have my chores I need to finish up and a very chill day. Yeah, that's what I got. I'll talk to you later. Hello. I'm home from church and I went and got some lunch with a friend. I am about to sit down and listen to some more of Rachel Hawkins' book, The Heiress, and I'm gonna play some Sims and warm up. It's so chilly outside. I will let you know, I am actually, between yesterday and today, I have listened to 82% of this audiobook. So I could totally finish it today. I told you a little bit about what this book is about, but essentially the lady, is writing these letters to her adopted son and his adopted son and his wife are back at Ashburn House or Ashbury House, I don't remember, dealing with all of the extended family and in-laws and all the drama um, and some stuff has been revealed. It's a good book, it's interesting, it's quite fascinating, I do like the characters but it's not as over the top as I thought it was going to be. It is pretty tame and I like over the top thrillers. So right now I'm kind of like eh about it, even though I'm actually, I'm having a great time. But from what I know about myself, I can see this book being a, you know, a story I don't really think about that much after I finish it, even though I'm entertained in the moment when I'm listening, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna play some Sims and I'll keep you posted on what I read today. I did some chores and played Sims, and now it's time to read. Listen, I watched some Britney Broski videos. I only watched two. I only watched two. And now it's time to read, okay? Self-control. I have to cut myself off. <laughs> what if I had Nalani? <laughs> All right, Bubba's. So if you missed last weekend's vlog, it's okay, I forgive you. I will put the link in the description for it, but I love Alani's, which are an energy drink. My favorite is Cherry Slush, and I said that they are not at my Food Lion. Look what was at my Food Lion. I got a pack of six. So I'm gonna drink this and get to reading the motion. Here's my review of The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins. Good, three stars. I've just made it to page 100 of The Martian. So Jared just got home from, he was out skating. I'm gonna cook a gluten-free pizza and we're gonna settle in for the evening. Pizza is cooked and there is no better way to round out this perfect weekend than rewatching Hamilton. All right, welcome to the end of the vlog. Hamilton is also an example of women in history having their lives recorded either accurately or inaccurately. And this is me crying about it. Thanks for watching. Love you.